I don't like I don't like nuclear weapons because it can hurt people a lot and it, and it can make more more damage to the areas and people and I don't like to and like Joshua said I don't like to think about that and also it's really scary knowing about that because lots of nuclear things killed lots of nuclear people. Talking about it and doing something with it, you know is bad, and you're not doing nothing about it. Some got doctor degrees, master degrees. So what sense in having all these degrees and the highest degrees that with all the education and brain they got seem like they are the ones that block and then don't want to recognize the truth and you don't value them or knowledge this nuclear weapon how bad it is it's impossible to think of our planet our world as being totally destroyed and that's what will happen if we do not abolish nuclear weapons. I don't think nuclear weapons should be here because it's hard for me knowing that my sister Nia and other kids have to grow up in a world where they're always having to be afraid of weapons. So that's where I stand. Kids from 15, they got voices. They know right from wrong. And I bet you, you ask the average kid, because kids, they can be more honest than grown people. You get 500 kids, and you ask them this question about nuclear weapon, they'll give you an honest answer. We support the nuclear ban treaty. They should have this in all the schools. For where I stand from on nuclear weapons, it's just it's a, it's a scary thing to think about because because the way the way that they're built, they're designed to to completely destroy everything, and I don't like to think about that because because the amount of devastation they're able to cause is like. It's ungodly. It's just for me. It's just disgusting that people that people think even think about using that as as a for as a, just to like just in war, which is which is completely unnecessary. When you, when people should be thinking about peace and how and how and how, different ways to find out how to re, how to find more renewable resources so that we can keep keep our planet alive. The need to make sure that we have these uh, platforms that we need, that and a, also that will be a top ahead. priority, Senator. I, I guess I'm kind of surprised by your answer, uh, General. When when the chairman asked you about the triad, specifically about maintaining an effective nuclear triad of land, air, and sea-based platforms, um, I thought your answer was. Yes, we have to maintain that effective nuclear triad. Is that correct? That's correct, Senator. And I realize that that you do have to review um, where where we currently are in modernization. But I would think 
under having an understanding that every administration and every stratcom commander and also our our um, secretaries of defense have been adamant that we cannot fall behind on this um, your answer that you would have to get back on me is somewhat surprising I I understand it's a it's a complicated topic um, but it is a 60 year old foundational concept that that we have here Yes, Senator, and, and I think I think that we're in agreement that this is a priority. This needs to remain a priority. Uh, what I was just conveying was the specific timelines of which pieces are are are, uh, are being uh, uh, resourced at what rate. Uh, those things I, I would really like to get into details and have a further discussion with you on. But there's no question that I consider this to be a priority. And it will remain a priority, and I look forward to uh, getting with uh, the STRATCOM commander and having that discussion in detail. Well, thank you. I hope also, if you are confirmed, you will be a strong advocate for the National Nuclear Security Administration uh, being able to receive sufficient funding so that they can meet the Department of Defense's needs. I will be. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Fisher. James Baldwin was an active member of SANE in 1961. At a rally on disarmament, he said, What am I doing here? Only those who would fail to see the relationship between the fight for civil rights and the struggle for world peace would be surprised. Racial hatred and the atomic bomb both threaten the destruction of man as created free by God. Those in power have put together a poorly constructed investment portfolio that has and will continue to take people's lives. This investment portfolio is fatally flawed because of missing data. The unmeasured human and environmental costs, the lived experiences of people living near where nuclear materials exist and are produced. This includes nuclear weapons, power, and waste. The nuclear industry is based on an extractive relationship with the earth and people. The first energy system in this country required the extraction of black bodies from Africa if you are unwilling to discuss how race is a factor in our militarized economy that values profit over people, and how only through anti-racism will we find adequate solutions, then you are participating in and benefiting from a system of white supremacy. This is the moment, and we need folks to rise to this occasion to meet it. Join us. Black people should be speaking. All people of color, race, or breed should give their opinion and speak on that. And ask your government why they're spending so much money on nuclear weapons, you know, when they need housings and all this stuff, you know, for people and they can have a better life, so. As Dr. King warned in 1959, what will be the ultimate value of having established social justice, white or black, where all people are merely free to face destruction by atomic war? Communism will never be defeated by the use of atomic bombs and nuclear weapons. Let us not join those who shout war and through their misguided passions nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. 
The Americans are forcing even their friends into becoming their enemies. We must rapidly begin the shift from a thing-oriented society to a person-oriented society, when machines and computers, profit motives and property rights are considered more important than people, the giant triplets of racism, extreme materialism and militarism are incapable of being conquered. who understood that to preach has always meant more than oratory and words. To preach in the tradition of Martin Luther King is to agitate, and yes, it is to separate from injustice, and it is not just some cute love that says everybody loves everybody. It is the kind of love that dares to tell the truth about injustice. And if you're not going to deal with that part of Dr. King, then leave him alone. You prove with unity you're strong enough to break the back of a racist system. And you've also proved that you are strong enough to do away with the military industrial complex. But those who write the laws and direct the affairs of government have used the awesome power of this society more irresponsibly and more immorally than any of the young. In 1962, Coretta went to Geneva for disarmament with women strike for peace. I work hard every day. My parents raised me to care, recycle, not litter. One thing for sure, we don't want any part of destroying this beautiful earth. We want technology that solves our problems, not destroy solutions. Today, I state clearly and with conviction, America's commitment to seek the peace and security of a world without nuclear weapons. We have all these money to pour into these weapon of mass destruction and we are unable to take care of our own. Where you spend it? Not in my pocket. You know, I pay taxes every week. So someone must have been borrowing money on my account. Where is it going? I would like to know because if I'm the one that's paying this debt, you know, I should be able to say, listen, I need uh, one of those bombs you're making. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just a bit of history. Some of you know I was very involved with the Sane Freeze movement in the day. I worked for a great warrior, Congressman Ron Dellums. Forty years ago, Congressman Ronald Dellums mightily championed the stopping of the funding for our nuclear bombs. Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm was there pushing with him. And we then talked about the fact that we had to engage communities of color. And our peace movement then should have been a movement for peace and justice. I'm saying this again now, that we have to have uh, the justice peace with our peace and nuclear disarmament mobilization. Uh, and I found an old photo of me. Now this was again way back in the day that said, and I was carrying it in a, in a march here, and it said a nuclear bomb is an equal opportunity destroyer. And it is. And so we're working on Capitol Hill to build uh, an, an, a, a movement that's based on intersectionality where we bring people of color, communities of color together 
to work on uh, nuclear disarmament. Africa as a whole doesn't need weapons of mass destruction. These are nuclear weapons. These are missiles. We don't need expertise to even teach us or bring these weapons into Africa. Right now what Africa need is agriculture, Africa need education, Africa need expertise that would help teach us how to grow our, our, our economy, how to become a good governance, you know, to get rid of the dictatorships. Because these are all interconnected in bringing weapons to Africa. They really do not need weapons of mass destruction or their expertise that would teach them. Sales of arms to Africa has broke havoc not only for Africa, but all over the world. Nelson Mandela always despised the bomb, seeing it as a grave danger for universal human rights, his overarching passion. He called for African unity to establish a nuclear weapon-free continent. He stated, those with elaborated and sophisticated arguments to justify these terrible weapons call it naive, but we must ask the question, why do they need them anyway? He then presented a resolution titled Toward a Nuclear Weapons Free World, The Need for a New Agenda. Thinking of Black Lives Matter as a movement, a movement that came from the pain and the anguish of young black people. I think it's important to let them realize the great danger that nuclear weapons pose to the entire world. And this is an issue that they should embrace. I think we need to look also at the, the money that's given to the Pentagon. In the last 50 years, the United States has seen the largest transfer that has ever happened in history, wealth transfer from the bottom of society to the top, than at any other moment in history. When that kind of wealth transfer has happened, it's happened because of a military coup and the banks and the corporate class ran all the way laughing to the bank. So this is a struggle for the soul of America. Malcolm X had gathered and allied with Hiroshima survivors in Harlem. And in a country that spends, I think, $50 billion a year for defense alone, I'm shocked that uh, any, uh, there's apprehension over Negroes trying to do something to defend themselves. If the government is concerned, instead of uh, being so worried about what the Negro is going to do, the government should stop dragging its feet and take the initiative necessary to eliminate the injustices that frustrate Negroes and drive them into a method of uh, defense. Travel broadens your scope, uh, gives you a wider understanding. The Holy Quran teaches us to uh, judge a man by his conscious behavior, by his intention. And my uh, reason for going to Mecca was to get a better understanding of the religion of Islam and what the Quran teaches.
So I judge a man by his conscious behavior. I am not a racist. I don't subscribe to any of the tenets of racism. It's not a case of being good and bad, good or bad, blacks and whites. It's a case of being good or bad human beings. My son been in Desert Storm and all that. And I thank God he came back with some sense. A lot of those soldiers come back, you know, they were messed up. Federal funding for emergency preparedness and health care has been on the decline for 15 years while the military budget has kept, keeps going up, 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 up. What we know is that these wars for the last 50 years have had really little to do with protecting Americans. Well, there's been a lot of profit private contractors performing a lot of the traditional military roles. One study said there was almost 10 times as many military contractors per soldiers in the Afghan and Iraq wars as there were during Vietnam. And many of them making far more money than underpaid U.S. soldiers. And I'm praying for the whole world because every morning I wake up, I tell God to go to the south, the east, the north, the west. It's a whole wide world for everybody. You should never fault no one for just speaking the truth about what they believe, what they think. I'm 71 years old and I've seen so much, demonstrated so many times all over this uh, country to try to end, end nuclear weapons, to have nuclear disarmament, permanent nuclear disarmament. Not, not pretend disarmament. I'm, I'm a retired educator, 36 years, taught history, taught real history, uh, you know, because I, I believe in teaching the children the truth and not uh, lies. I was criticized in my school for wearing a shirt that says no blood for oil. I was, I was looked upon as, as un-American. I still wore it. This uh, dog tag that I'm wearing uh, is in memory of my brother who was a, a sergeant major in the Marines. He, he fought in um, the Korean War and he thought he was done and then they sent him to Vietnam, which he resented. He did not want to go. Um, then I had another brother who was also in the Air Force and he was shot down in Vietnam in MIA for almost a year until we until they found him and then but when he came back he was so damaged this race for nuclear weapons and who can outdo each other you know it's like the it's like the guys in the schoolyard you know my nuke is bet is bigger than your nuke and uh, you know and in the meantime the people of the world are suffering this senseless need to be the, um, I don't know, the champion of nuclear weapons and destroy the world. Our logo is Drums Crying for Peace. So as far as guns and weapons of mass destruction of any kind, whether it's a handgun, whether it's a nuclear weapon or whatever it may be, to destroy human beings by the click of a button or by the pulling of a trigger. One of the things that I live by is a couple principles that my great grandmother gave to me when I was growing up and when she bestowed my drum on me and tell me that my drum can take me any place in the world as long as I adhere to certain principles and they are first and foremost knowing who God is that's first and foremost secondly it's family and understanding that within family there may be arguments there may be disturbances there may be things of different things happening but at the same time 
at the end of the day, it's family. Another principle she gave me to do is always be true to myself, even if it may cost me my life. And I adhere to these principles. And the last but not least is humility. Green is the pastures of the earth. So once we destroy the pastures of the earth, then how can we farm? We need each other. Through all things, we are at the end of the day, human beings. We have a mind to think. So in doing so, nuclear devices is the ultimate destruction of us. We need to look at humanity as a people, just as a people. To say the least, <laughs> we don't need them. Since 1972, when I was in school and I read about the harms that they do, that the government does not tell us about. Just the deceit, the deceit behind nuclear weapons, and they make us believe that we are not the, um, that we don't use nuclear weapons, you know, and that's just a damn shame. Commit their genocide on the masses of people. They separate us with having everybody believe that they're separate and apart from a human being. Nuclear weapons, homelessness, injustice in the education system, the healthcare system, the judicial system, so that people can come together, unite. We're more together than we realize. And once people wake up and see the injustices that are going on right in their backyard, right in their country, right to them, not until then that we're gonna take a, take a stand in unity together as a human race, not a black race, not a white race. Half of the people in this country don't know the facts. And when they're talking, they're not telling us the facts. But if you really know the facts or anything you're doing, then you can give the correct answers. What about all the kids that are coming up? The world might can end. Serve about nuclear weapon, and I guarantee you, they all will give you the best answer. Um, hi, my name is Chantel, and I think that we spend thousands and thousands of dollars on nuclear weapons, and we could be spending it on helping our communities. Yeah. Hello, my name is Aubrey and I think that we should ban nuclear weapons because like Chantel said, we use it for millions and millions of dollars that we can use for communities that actually need it and it, it, it isn't just weapons, there are weapons that affect millions and millions of lives. My name is Ryda and I support the nuclear ban treaty because the world is a beautiful place and you can't see the beauty of the world if it's all covered in smoke and dead bodies. to hear about this treaty. My friends were really excited. And as soon as I found out that the nuclear states are refusing to recognize it, it suddenly felt like this parental force was coming down on m me and my generation and those nations who are on board with it and were saying, no, you can't have this, which to me is actually really childish. These nuclear states think it's brave, or at least are presenting themselves as thinking it's so brave that they have nuclear weapons and refuse to get rid of them, but really what I think would be the bravest thing would be to say enough is enough and to stop. Bayard Rustin in the early 1950s 
thought standing against the atomic bomb was worth risking his life and dying for. He did not just organize the famous march on Washington in 1963, but decades before was a strong, outspoken opponent of nuclear weapons and traveled the world. In 1959, he traveled to Ghana to protest France's testing of its nuclear weapons in the Sahara. Brothers and sisters, how wonderful it is to be here surrounded by friends of passion, friends who are committed to justice and equality. I remember telling a young person how important it was to be involved in all concerns that help to make this a better world. Because that is the way to enrich yourself and enrich what you have to give to others because it is in giving to others that you realize yourself. The one biggest reason I have for uh, banning nuclear weapons all across the world between all countries is that I feel that uh, so many of these countries feel like having these uh, weapons are good in order for, uh, just for the last resort, you know, just something to have. But honestly, I don't believe that they know the true impact of what these weapons can do, uh, not only in an attack on our country, but in retaliation into another country as well. I think for me, uh, when it comes to nuclear weapons, uh, they're a weapon of mass destruction and something that can destroy uh, so many lives and it can be something that we can avoid if we ban it. And as far as the money that goes into these weapons, I think it could be used in a better way. I think there's so many communities that are underserved that could use this money and it can help our entire world so much better because so many people can get the help that they really need. And as far as protection, uh, there's always other ways besides nuclear weapons in order for us to feel safe, not only as a country, but also for other countries as well that we don't know of. So again, uh, in my opinion, we should be banning nuclear weapons and we should be moving in a different way so that there is a better option that doesn't wipe out half of humanity in a shorter period of time. Uh, I'm totally against nuclear weapons. Uh, they are a waste of money. A waste of time, a waste of energy. It's a war machine that uh, we really do not need in this time of uh, in this time of covert and peace and ending wars. I mean, what are we gonna do? Bomb each other to death? <laughs> it makes no sense. Nuclear wars is uh, I don't know some kind of uh, thing that. Man invented that to kill each other, I guess, to get rid of the whole damn planet. Thank you. We have to abolish the idea of the destruction of human life. Who will the nuclear weapons be aimed at? Wherever they are aimed, it means the destruction of human life, and we cannot do that. It's unthinkable, unconscionable. No, we do not have the right. Time to pause for planning on the path ridding the world of nuclear weapons. I don't know what could be a more important mission. I'm hopeful for a future where we see our wasted war dollars, your tax dollars, reinvested in our struggling communities that are really crying out for justice. An America where we feed hungry children rather than building nuclear bombs. The insane and obscene monies given to the Pentagon to destroy life, all life, is something that we have to mobilize against and use that money for constructive purposes, for the good of the earth 
and its people. All monies that are put into the construction of nuclear weapons. Abolish them now so that we can have life on our island home for all people. Paul Robeson, W.E.B. Du Bois, in the 1950s participated in demonstrations against the nuclear arm race. Du Bois approved and participated in a Ban the Bomb petition drive. Today, U.S. Representative Eleanor Holmes Norton has a bill in Congress that calls for the U.S. to join the treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons, now international law. Urging the United States to approve the treaty. My bill provides that federal funds for nuclear weapons programs would be directed to human and infrastructure needs, such as housing, healthcare, social security, restoring environment, and creating a carbon free, nuclear-free energy. In 1976, Dick Gregory and Muhammad Ali were clear and outspoken, participating in the continental walk across the United States for disarmament and in nuclear weapons. always worried about dirty bombs here and there. Why? Because we play with that stuff and sometimes we are careless. Some other people know its value because, you know, it brings power. The more we have, the more they will try to get. These should be lessons. With money, anybody can get everything nowadays. It's a concern of mine, especially being a parent. We thought that this subject uh, would be part of the past. The priorities are not there. The people who are elected to make decisions on our behalf are not like, you know, listening to us or are not like, you know, really in tune with our needs. Who have the bigger bomb and who can, you know, exterminate who and, you know, we got to look at the bigger picture because we all connected. You got to feel it. You know, look in a country. That's part of yourself. You know, I'm going deep, but, you know, uh, forgive me. Hi, my name is Anna Min, and I believe that we should ban using nuclear weapons because these nuclear weapons are used to kill millions of people. And a, a ton of children, especially in Hiroshima, were killed, and they still, and even their relatives, or their, how do I say this? And even their children are facing the consequences of, like, a group of people. And so, I don't believe that we should continue using these weapons. Langston Hughes repeated, how can white America continue to assert its racial maturity while building weapons capable of extinguishing human life from the planet? We have all these nuclear weapons. The United States alone could probably blow the world up a hundred times. Seems to me one time is enough. Uh, I know two would be surely enough. All this power, and what are we told? To protect us, to keep us alive, to sustain us. You need to be able to blow the world up a hundred times. And yet all of this, not one of those nuclear bombs can stop a little teeny germ. Harry Belafonte, Nina Simone, Lorraine Hansberry, all our greats stood up against the madness and the controlling of fear. We're not weighing it with the best of what um, our people, our human 
beings bring to the conversation. Look at the countries where these decisions are being made. Uh, one group of people are, are making that decision. The sort of passion or the virility to, to have these weapons. We're better than that. We're more creative. I don't think we think big enough. There are other ways that we can solve our differences. Change our thinking. We'll start thinking as human beings, as earthlings, you know what I'm saying? And stop the division, you know? And uh, I'm waiting for that day. And the Cold War pushed the United States to produce, test, deploy weapons of unprecedented toxicity. And Native Americans have been left exposed to the dangers of this toxicity. And that is why we must continue to have moral dissent and moral vision and moral resistance until we exercise this demon of militarism from our national body. And the Native Americans teach that we can't think about our generation or even the next generation, that we should always be thinking seven generations out, and that the choices and the decisions we make now will impact and ripple to the seventh generation. I just said a prayer of thanks to the person, the being for creation we call the person who created us from thought, to the Great Spirit, to our Mother Earth, water, fire, and air. And I think that's what we need to do to ground us when we deal with any of the technology and what we're dealing with here now. I mean, there's a reason why the elements are where they are. We need to keep the uranium in the ground. It's deadly, not just in terms of atomic bombs, which is the deadliest expression. But when we take it out of the ground, it also is poisonous. And the Navajo Nation Reservation, for example, I think 20% of the women are now have detectable levels of uh, radiation exposure. I mean, it's, it's genocide. And this is uranium that can be used for the power plants, but it's killing us. That's what ties the climate change and the nuclear power and the nuclear weapons together, is the misuse of the elements of creation. Those that I've learned from have taught me that we need to respect the earth as it is. We need to find another way. So, Anishi, thank you for, for listening and going forward in a good way. Anishi. devastating. And the idea that something as negative as that in, in our society could even be allowed to exist at this point is, is just is terrible to me. I mean, I think somehow our society could get to the point where we don't need to have those kinds of weapons available to anyone. Like a horror science fiction film to project future and to talk about future is very difficult. There's so much that could be done to de just develop humanity. Research tells us that one billion in military spending creates 11,200 jobs. You know, they always throw that out there, well, it's creating jobs. But the same amount of money would create 26,000 jobs if it was invested in education. We could redirect some of that $800 billion into the things that are really creating national insecurity, like poverty, the lack of health care, the lack of living wage. If we're going to really have a society that's holistic and our children are educated properly and we can truly look at a future that has some possibilities and is truly hopeful, the amount of money that's spent in the, the production the maintenance for a fraction of what we pay to maintain the industry of war, we could develop technology that would first of all propel us into an environmentally sound existence.
the most environmentally destructive thing. Because we have a strong army, we influence and we can intimidate most of the time, we are setting the precedence and we are the example that other countries are following. People of color have been dying and suffering from cancers due to the fact nuclear facilities have been dumping their waste in our backyards, they have contaminated our water and environment for generations to come. Hear our cry. The outcry of the people is the same. We ask our representatives to come together. My name is Gabby and I support this ban because I believe personally that these nuclear weapons are harming our resources and without these resources we won't be able to make proper food and be able to take care of our families for generations and generations. And these nuclear weapons are harming innocent people who didn't want to get bombed in the first place. So I believe these weapons should not be used anymore. Our climate is here for all of us. Black Lives Matter. Humanity is for all of us. Do the right thing. Support the new international treaty. I certainly don't support things that put um, life at risk. So I think about my child, I think about other children, and not just little children, but of us all being children. Hi, I'm Shania and I believe that we should support the Nuclear Ban Treaty because like Vida said, this world is a very beautiful and exotic place and we pay our taxes just for them to be used for nuclear weapons that can literally end a whole world and it's not right and it's not fair because innocent people are being killed and yeah. With black women more than three times more likely to die of pregnancy related causes than white women. Why? Not because we're a poor country. Not because we can't afford health care or first class education or a good union job, or living wages, or infrastructure, but because our economy is first a war economy, before it is an uplifting our people economy. Somebody got to be accountable. You know, we can't just have a black book and say, oh, I signed this, and you take whatever money you need, and you do all the project, and you get all the great minds of the world, and then we come and build this bomb, and okay, it costs, $10 billion, here's your, you know, your receipt, you know. We might blame our debt on entitlement and welfare programs, but our debt is really based on all the bombs we've exploded in wars we should have never gone into. We have enough. Scarcity is a lie. What we don't have enough of is the moral capacity to face this demon of militarism. I'm Julia and I think that the nuclear weapons should be banned because the people, the innocent lives that are just living in these places that are getting bombed, they were not part of the war. They didn't choose to do all this. They didn't hurt anybody, nothing. They were just living their normal lives and they got affected badly by these bombs. Going off of Hiroshima, the people that are left over, they have cancer or they have different medical um, things different medical problems with them and it just it hurts the world so badly and seeing how climate change and pollution is destroying our world these bombs don't help it at all we have to be honest about that asymmetric relation of power that structure of domination that's the beginning but also in terms of the wars mm -hmm. look at the democrats vote 
for Trump's $750 billion military budget. Did we hear any major critiques of it coming out of the Democratic Party? Trump bombs Syria. What do you get out of so many Democrats? Well, he's finally acting like a president. Oh, so that's what presidents do is learn how to bomb, huh? Oh, that's interesting. Get out of my way with that John Wayne mentality. Martin Luther King Jr. died talking about what? Poverty, racism, materialism, and what else? Militarism. War. Drop bombs dropped in Libya, Syria, Mali, Niger, Pakistan, Afghanistan, across the board. They land in hoods with no money for education, no money for health care. Can't find the money. Oh, we got a budgetary austerity we must promote. But we notice when it comes to finding money for wars, all of a sudden it just the money flows like water. Those are the kind of things that need to be addressed. And unfortunately, in most of our presidential discussions, foreign policy hardly surfaces. I don't think mm. there was a serious discussion of it in that last debate. Mm. Not at all. For every dollar spent, 60 cents goes to military industrial complex. Wow. Priorities need to be revamped. You see? And that's one of the ways in which I think we have to keep track of these various politicians. and this world to higher ground. Higher ground is where we build schools and not war. Higher ground is where we are more concerned about bread and butter than bombs and destruction. Higher ground is where we are more concerned about a guided conscience than guided missiles. Higher ground is where we are more concerned about saving life and educating children than exploding communities. Higher ground is where we are more concerned about treaties of peace than triggering war. Higher ground is where black and white and red and brown and Jewish and Muslim and Asian can form a beloved community instead of finding more ways to kill and destroy and oppress one another. Higher ground is what we must fight for. And since there's already so many problems in the world, these nuclear bombs are not helping them, they're not benefiting anyone, like, at all. So I just believe that since they are not benefiting anyone, then we should, we should get rid of them because the whole point in us being here is to make the world better is to help each other. But we're not helping each other if we keep um, setting nuclear bombs off and hurting each other. So we should be helping each other instead of hurting each other and be positive um, as possible as we can instead of being negative. We have to join together and build a real global campaign to eliminate nuclear weapons once and for all. And that's the pathway to peace. I want to close with uh, Dr. King's charge to us when he said that peace is not just the absence of tensions, it is the presence of justice. So thank you all again for being here. Nuclear banned weapons are bad because it's hurting, hurting the community and hurting people around us and it's bad for the planet.